Welcome everyone to another session of the Adventure Podcast. Today in Düsseldorf at the Unboxed On Tour event. Today with Jeff Cohen, who flew in from the US. And boy, my arm's tired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we are very happy to actually welcome you in Germany, finally. Yes, uh, we have connected at numerous events really around the globe. And uh, I'm so excited to be here in Dusseldorf uh, for the Unboxed event to meet with a lot of the German um, customers that we have and kind of really hear how the market um, is reacting to a lot of the exciting announcements that were made at the main Unboxed event um, as we share them with our customers around the globe. Yeah, I believe so. And is it your first time in Germany? I've been to Germany before, um, but it's my first time maybe with Amazon in Germany. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we're very happy to have you here. Yes. And uh, first podcast that I've done with, uh, with, with a German partner. So, really? yeah. Oh, I'm, I feel honored. Yes, of course. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can share a little bit on like which new features and which announcements did you have at Unbox in Austin like uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I heard there were like pretty huge things that impact sellers and brands a lot. And we hear a lot of like our sellers and brands who are trying to already implement those. Maybe you could share a little bit on what actually was announced and what you think is most exciting. Yeah, so I think that um, I think we had around um, 18 different product announcements at Unboxed in Austin. Um, some of the big ones really followed uh, two or three main themes. So one was around uh, creative and the updates around our creative studio uh, with the release of new Gen AI audio ads. So now Amazon has um, audio ads, video ads, and photos that can all be done using Gen AI where um, you only have to give it a product and it will make all of the content that you need. Um, or if you have a full video that you've already done for your business, you can upload it into our creative studio and it will break it apart into the different pieces that you need to run different ads. So really uh, a lot, a large step forward in a lot of the challenges that brands have had in developing creative. Uh, one of the other big themes was really around the Amazon DSP and really working the DSP in a way that is more user friendly. So really designed to make the number of steps to build a DS campaign easier, as well as giving a lot more functionality um, and insights into the campaigns that are running. The third one really focuses in around AMC and Amazon Marketing Cloud. The big announcement was that Amazon Marketing Cloud is now available for sellers who only do sponsored ads, meaning that you used to have to have the DSP before, but now you don't. And that's creating a whole nother set of insights that brands are able to use to understand how their sponsor ads are doing. And then within AMC, you can create audiences and then you can bid against those audiences within your sponsored ads. So I kind of brushed over those all really quickly, but those are like the three high level um, releases that came. And then a lot of the other releases kind of uh, ladder up to those three releases. That's super interesting. I really like the AMC part a lot too. Um, so we work with DSP a lot as well. And now that it's actually available for sponsored ads only, that's a big step. Yes, it's, I think it's a really big step. I think a lot of brands haven't really had the full visibility into how the different parts of their sponsored ads maybe work together between sponsored products, sponsored brands, and sponsored display to help drive the shopper to make a decision. And so when you look at a last touch attribution model, which is what sponsored products uses, you're not able to fully see the other touch points of ads that a consumer is, um, is going through. And when you're able to look at AMC, you're able to see how many ads is the consumer totally seen and you know, what type of patterns are better for driving sales for your customers. And so you don't necessarily see it at an individual sales level, but you see it at an aggregated level, which gives you this ability to see overall when somebody sees multiple 
units of my ads, um, they're actually able to be more successful in driving um, sales. And when they're um, above and beyond what they're trying to do, um, that's when I wanna stop. That's the optimal point for running my ads. And so those are great ways to become more efficient in our advertising, which is what all of us as brands wanna do. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. And you were talking about audiences too. So what can I use these audiences for? And what would be use cases that you see that sellers can, can use this for? Yeah, so um, AMC creates this aggregated reporting of the activity that's happening both on Amazon or with your first party data that you bring in. And within that, you're able to create audiences. And with the types of audiences that you could create, an example would be like um, somebody who's added an item to cart but hasn't bought, or somebody who's uh, viewed a product detail page a certain number of times. So there's different audiences that you can create. Um, and then what you're able to do is you're able to uh, take those audiences with the new functionality and you can actually use them as a bid boost within sponsored um, products. And so you can say that when my sponsored product campaign is showing up and this audience sees it, I wanna bid more. And you know this is new, so our advertisers are just getting started in using it, but it's created an opportunity to find more relevant shoppers and to you know help put your ads in front of customers who are interested in your product based on the signals that they've shown. So I feel like DSP and PPC are melting more and more together and there are more features coming from D DSP to PPC. Do you know what the bigger vision is there? If there might be like more DSP features in PPC in the, in the future too? Well, I don't necessarily think that DSP is bleeding into PPC. I think that what you're seeing is, is that brands are expanding to have more full funnel type of campaigns. And so I think that sponsored products, sponsored ads, will always have their place in being a conversion focused activity. But for brands to reach larger audiences, it's necessary for them to expand um, and to find new ways to reach those audiences. And the DSP really gives you that ability to really scale the audiences and your reach. And so when you start to look at it and you look at like sponsored ads in general, sponsored ads is really a search functionality, right? Um, for the most part, within sponsored products and sponsored um, sponsored products and sponsored brands, when you start to get into sponsored display, then you start to get into larger um, audiences in the display network. When you move to the DSP, you're getting into the Amazon owned and operated properties, which are allowing you to put ads into things like IMDb, Freebie, Twitch, um, or or Prime Video, and then when you even expand further you have the Amazon DSP third-party inventory, which is allowing you to put your, your ads onto third-party sites really throughout the whole internet um, when they show the same signals that you're looking for um, in, in the other way. And what that's doing is, is it's giving your brand this larger reach, and then it's giving you a measurable way to understand the impact that that reach has on the results that you're trying to drive. And so, it requires a shift of the thinking of an advertiser to move away from a simplistic measurement like a cost or tacos, where it's very driven off of conversion focused mentality. And when you start to look at the DSP, you start to look at metrics that you pull in through AMC, such as lifetime value or new to brand that start to show you uh, hey, I'm going after a new customer. Here's how much it costs me to acquire a new customer. For the campaign that I'm running, this is the number of new customers that it's driving for my business. And here's what I'm able to do with those new customers once they've been with me for 12 months. And so it's uh, allowing brands to kind of think bigger, um, think bigger in terms of the reach of their brand, think bigger in terms of um, the value that their customers bring to them and giving them the ability to reach them in all these different areas through the DSP. So I don't think it's a melding. The melding that you're talking about is really being able to bring the signals from like AMC and things that maybe 
um, working well within your DSP and using those to improve your sponsored ads based on the additional signals that you have. And Amazon really has been developing more signals for advertisers over the last few years to really make advertising more efficient and more effective. Yeah, that's super powerful. And especially like having all the data points with ANC, having all the data points at one place where yeah. you actually can see the whole customer journey. It's like, it's kind of fun to see, okay, first my customer engaged with the DSP ad, then he engaged with the PPC ad, and you can see like the whole journey, and you can also see what the actual impact of your DSP in the end is. Right, and you have to. You have to be able to see what that journey looks like. And when we talk about full funnel, right, we say full funnel at scale, which means that you can get a customer anywhere in their journey Scale, meaning that you can reach a large number of um, those t potential shoppers in a, with measurable results that you can tie back the marketing activity to the campaign metric that you're trying to base your campaign KPI on. And so all of that becomes really important. And then it's available for small brands and for large brands. And so as your brand is growing, Amazon is really more than just a conversion focused activity. It's really a brand building activity. And you get to see these amazing stories of these brands who are using this, who are who wouldn't traditionally be buying ads on um, regular television, who are now able to buy ads because of the cost and because of the um, availability for streaming television um, or even expand into, you know, prime video, which is just really exciting to see. Yeah. And finally, kind of TV ads became affordable for every brand, even small brands. That's yeah. And we have to look at the changing dynamic that's occurring, right? We have um, shoppers who are now Gen Z shoppers who have a lot of disposable income. We're seeing a behavioral change where less people are watching linear TV and more people are watching streaming TV. And this is what's all driving the need for brands to engage with these shoppers where they are. And ultimately, as a brand, we want to go to where our shoppers are and bring them in to buy our products. Yeah, I'm always happy when I see one of our clients' um, advertisements on Prime TV. That's always... It feels kind of, it's fun. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's a, um, you know, at Unboxed in Austin, I interviewed a brand, Poppy, which is a, a soda brand in the US. And Poppy didn't exist four years ago. Four years ago, the product was just being developed. And today, they're one of the top selling soda brands on Amazon. They are running streaming TV and they're running um, Prime Video. And they've done this through building really a test and learn mentality. They've been able to engage with their audience through ways that their audience want to be engaged. And they've been able to grow the size of their audience. Um, and like, you know, this past year, they were a, a sponsor for um, WNBA, which is the, the Women's National Basketball Association um, in the in the US, which brought them in a whole new audience of potential customers and again, they were able to do it with measurable results, which allowed them to make the reinvestments that they needed to make when they saw that it was working and they were able to grow it to the scale that they wanted to grow it to. That's super exciting. And we started doing or managing DSP ads for our clients in 2019. And at that time, it was mostly bigger brands yep. using DSP. Yep. And now we see that there are customer like small brands also using it because it became so much more affordable. Do you see a movement there that it's? Yeah, I think um, I think a lot of brands have tested DSP um, and they probably tested it in the early days where they were doing a lot of remarketing and retargeting you as using the DSP, because that was kind of the natural way that you would move into display advertising. And I think that now is the time for those brands to really start to go more into the brand building side of the DSP. And I always say it's a, it's a qual crawl, walk, run type of mentality. You have to try it. You have to see how it works for you. You have to figure out um, if you have the right creative, is that creative working? How do you scale that creative for the different mediums? And then as it's working, you figure out what's working and you double down or you triple down on those type of investments. And I think that's really where brands are able to be successful is that 
they're able to build that test and learn mentality and really grow on what they're doing to drive the success that they're looking for. Okay, yeah, that sounds cool. And like when we talk to our clients and we talk about DSP, there are like some sellers, especially like smaller ones or mid-sized who are not like big brands yet. And they say they tried DSP at some point and it didn't work for them. Yeah. So what do you see or what do you think? What makes the difference between a brand who is um, successful with DSP and who is not? Yeah, I think part of it is um, where you are in your brand life cycle. That's a big part of it, right? So is your brand mature enough? Is your product um, have all the retail readiness that's ready? And are you as a brand, um, are you as a brand ready to, to be looking at different metrics to measure success? So it's hard to answer that question generally because you have to understand, well, what metrics were they measuring success on and how are they measuring that success and how should they be measuring the success of the DSP? So it's about setting the right expectations. The other thing that I say is that there are many levers that you can pull to be successful on Amazon, right? And if we, yeah, I'll just rattle some off, right? You've got your product detail page, you've got your stores, you've got posts, you've got um, sponsored ads, you've got DSP. You can keep going on and on and on. When you start to look at all of that, um, you do things and you try them. And at certain times in the life cycle of your product, they don't work. But that doesn't mean you write them off and you never do them. You have to come back and you have to relook at things that you've maybe tried in the past and retry it in the future. And so the DSP has gone through a lot of changes. It's gone through a lot of updates. There's a lot more inventory and there's a lot more metrics that are available today than there were a year ago or three years ago. So that's another good reason to potentially come back and test it and try. But again, like move at the pace that you're comfortable with. And I've always been an advocate for saying that um, you as a customer have to be comfortable with the investment that you're making and the metrics that you're going to measure for success. And then as you're seeing that success, then make the, the additional investments. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, I think we need to wrap up here. Yeah. But I really just I would just want to mention, I felt very honored that we were actually like mentioned on stage in Austin at Unbox. Yeah. So that was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and well, our partners are really important to us and we've had a great partnership with BidX, not just in Germany, but globally. And so we appreciate the partnership and, you know, appreciate all of the uh, local customers and advertisers who, who work with you and who listen to you. And, you know, we hear what you guys are asking for. We're trying to make improvements to the products. So if you have any, you know, reach out, share. We love to hear the feedback. Sounds good. Thank you very much. And we made it happen. We, we were able to, we were able to pull this off. So I'm glad we were able to do this. Thank you very much. Thank you.